Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie What Dreams May Come, released in the year 1998. The movie opens up with Chris Nielsen, a physician by profession, who is enjoying his vacation in Switzerland. While he's rowing his boat in the lake, someone rows past him after striking his boat. Chris gets up to scold the person, but when he sees a beautiful lady on the other side, he controls his anger and directs her way to get to the shore. Later, the two meet each other and the lady introduces herself as Annie Collins, an artist. The two talk for a long time and are instantly attracted to each other. They bond so well like they've known each other for a long time. The scene then fast forwards to the time of their marriage. Soon, Chris and Annie can be seen in their house enjoying their time with their grown-up kids, Ian and Marie. One morning, during breakfast, Marie asks her mother to pick her up after school, but Annie refuses, telling her that she has an important meeting to attend. She then sends her kids to school with their nanny. Chris goes to see them off, and his voice narrating in the background informs us about the death of the children in a car crash the same day. Life becomes extremely difficult for the couple after losing their children. Annie has a nervous breakdown, and the difficulties in their marriage threaten a divorce. But however, they manage to persevere through their hard times and remain together. The scene then fast forwards by four years, and Chris can be seen treating an ill child in the hospital. While he's putting on the brain scans of a little girl, he gets a call from Annie, who informs him about an art exhibition going to happen that night. She also mentions that eight paintings from Germany were supposed to arrive at her office, but unfortunately they're stuck somewhere. Hence, she urgently needs a solution to replace them in the art exhibition. Hearing this, Chris asks her to calm down and suggests she use her own paintings in the place of the lost paintings. Annie also agrees to do so, and Chris promises that he'll bring the paintings from the house as soon as he finishes his work at the hospital. After a while, Chris finishes his work and rushes home. On his way to the house, it's raining and he notices a number of cars slipping and colliding with each other under a tunnel. He somehow manages to stop his car and runs towards the accident site holding his medical kit. Being a doctor, Chris inquires with the people there if they need any medical assistance. On moving forward, he notices a woman stuck inside a flipped car and tries to save her. Right then, another car collides with the tunnel and comes flying towards Chris, killing him instantly. The death of Chris is a shock for Annie, as she is all alone now. In the following scene, we see Chris roaming around, unable to process the fact that he is dead. He tries his best to approach Annie and console her, but she doesn't listen to him. Moreover, nobody interacts with him. Later, Chris notices a blurred shadow-like appearance who introduces himself as Albert, his friend and mentor from his medical residency. Albert informs him that he's already dead. Chris further inquires about why he's not able to see him properly. In reply, Albert tells him that he will be able to see him when he accepts his death and moves on. At night, when Annie is trying to write something about Chris, he approaches her and tries to give her a message about him still being with her. But Annie is so disturbed that she doesn't even notice the message and throws the paper away. Seeing this, Albert suggests Chris walk away and let Annie face the truth. Desperate to make Annie feel that he's right beside her, Chris refuses to leave. The next day, Annie visits the graveyard and approaches Chris's tombstone. She runs her hands through the writings and remembers her late husband. Chris, on the other hand, comes closer to Annie and tries his best to make her feel that he's with her. Unfortunately, rather than feeling Chris's presence, Annie starts crying loudly. Seeing this, Chris realizes that he's of no use there and decides to walk away. In the next scene, Chris wakes up in heaven, a beautiful place similar to what he had seen in Annie's paintings. Now he is able to see Albert clearly, as he has accepted his death and moved on. Albert informs Chris that his surroundings are controlled by his thoughts and imagination. Soon, Chris notices the dream house that Annie painted in one of her paintings. He enters the house along with Albert and is amazed to see the interior, which is exactly what Annie had painted on her canvas. After some time, Chris and Albert go on a walk where Albert notices a purple tree in the middle of the hill. At the same time, Annie can be seen drawing the tree on her canvas, thinking that she can communicate with Chris through her paintings. Chris is amazed to see the things that Annie is painting in her real life. Seeing this, Albert tells Chris that he and Annie are soulmates, because of which Chris is able to see the tree in heaven. 
On the other hand, Annie realizes that Chris is dead and can no longer see her paintings, so she pours water on the canvas where the tree is drawn. Here in heaven, the tree that Chris and Albert are looking at also gets destroyed and all of its leaves fall down. Chris then understands that Annie is feeling lonely and gets angry as he's unable to comfort her. Later, Chris notices a toy of his daughter Marie and inquires with Albert about why he's not able to find his children there. In reply, Albert tells him that his children have created their own world and he will see them whenever he's ready. The next day, Chris wakes up and is greeted by a beautiful girl named Leona. She tells Chris that Albert had some important task to finish and that he sent her to take care of him. She then takes Chris to her world where he sees everyone flying around and enjoying their time. With everything going around, Chris remembers his daughter Marie and the paper doll art which was in her room. The world he's in seems similar to that of Mary's paper doll. After a while, it finally dawns on Chris that Leona is actually his daughter Marie. He then hugs her tight and the two share a beautiful reunion. In the following scene, Chris is at his dream house when Albert approaches him and informs him about Annie's death. At first, Chris gets sad, but later, when he realizes that Annie's pain is finally over and he'll get to meet her soon, he calms himself down. He then inquires with Albert about when he'll be able to meet Annie. Hearing this, Albert tries to make Chris understand that he will never be able to meet Annie as she has committed suicide and needs to fulfill her punishment for breaking the rule of death created by nature. Desperate to meet with Annie, Chris asks Albert to find a way, but the latter tells him that no one who committed suicide has ever entered heaven. Despite hearing this, Chris continues saying that he is Annie's soulmate and will do everything he can to find her and bring her back to heaven. Seeing Chris desperate, Albert decides to take him to a tracker who knows the path that will lead them to hell, the place where they can possibly find Annie. Following this, Chris can be seen on a boat with Albert on their way to meet with the tracker. When they reach a place similar to a library, Albert introduces Chris to an old man, the tracker. The tracker tells Chris that they might be able to find Annie, but she won't be able to recognize him or understand whatever he'll say to her. Soon, they sail towards hell and encounter some nasty weather conditions on their way. Later, the group is attacked by a group of spirits who pull their boat down, causing all of them to fall into the ocean. In the following scene, the group arrives at the shore and Chris inquires with the tracker about the strange place. The tracker tells him that they're near the gateway of hell and also mentions that he has stopped getting signals from Annie. Hearing this, Chris replies that it's because he was thinking about someone else for a while. Chris can't help but think of his son, Ian. After remembering how he described Ian as the one man he'd want by his side if he had to face hell, Chris realizes that Albert is Ian. The two then indulge in an emotional reunion and decide to find Annie together. But unfortunately, the tracker tells Ian that he cannot join them on their journey as Chris has already recognized him as his son and is facing difficulties remembering his wife. He suggests Ian stay back while he and Chris continue their journey to hell. Before Chris leaves, Ian states that he picked Albert's appearance because he believed Chris would be very receptive to Albert's advice without thinking twice. Ian also urges Chris to remember how he rescued his marriage when Ian and Mary died. Following this, Chris continues on his trek with the tracker, remembering Annie's pitiful condition after their children's death. After some time, Chris and the tracker approach a field filled with the buried faces of the dead. On looking at them closely, Chris spots Annie's face on the ground. When Chris tries to reach Annie, the field collapses, and later they arrive at a dark and twisted copy of Chris and Annie's dream house. The tracker then exposes himself to be the actual Albert, warning Chris that if he stays with Annie for more than three minutes, he will be bound in hell forever. All Chris can hope for is a chance to say his final goodbyes to Annie. The tracker also mentions to Chris that Annie has forgotten everything and he only has a few minutes to make Annie remember her past and bring her to heaven. When Chris walks into the remnants of the house, he discovers Annie crying as she calls his name. He approaches her and tries to make her recognize that he is her Chris, but Annie has lost her memory and is unable to recognize him. Annie is even unable to recall her death. Despite this, Chris continues to tell her about the time they spent and the beautiful moments they lived together. After spending a few minutes doing so and seeing no progress, Chris finally decides to give up. He gives up, but not in the way the tracker hoped. Instead, he chooses to spend eternity with Annie in hell and not leave her alone in the filthy conditions. Before the tracker leaves, 
Chris requests him to tell his children that their father loves them very much. Following this, Chris returns to Annie and expresses his intention to stay with her forever. He starts telling something to Annie, similar to what he said to her at the mental institution following the deaths of their children. Hearing this, Annie starts remembering everything and realizes that Chris is actually her husband. But it's too late. Chris has already spent enough time succumbing to hell and falling asleep to Annie's nightmare. After getting her memory back, Annie wants nothing but to save Chris. In the last scene, Chris opens his eyes and finds himself in heaven. He realizes that he has lost Annie, but when he turns back, he's surprised to see her standing right behind him. Chris is very happy to see her there and expresses it with tears of joy and a passionate kiss. Chris and Annie also reunite with their children, who have regained their original appearances. After some time, Chris suggests reincarnation as a way for him and Annie to relive their lives together. The film concludes with Chris and Annie reuniting as young children in a circumstance that is nearly identical to their initial encounter. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.